in the world. Cabinet calls for a negotiated diplomatic solution and urge all parties to uphold and protect human rights and abide by their obligations in terms of international law and in international humanitarian law. Government continues to assist South African citizens to leave Ukraine and a number of them have since returned home. We have also expressed our concern at all at the ill treatment of Africans trying to cross international borders during this time. We believe that developing countries must enjoy a greater share of voice and influence in institutions of global governance. South Africa, therefore, advocates for a more equitable international system and for the reform of multilateral institutions to promote greater equality. On the South African Investment Conference, South Africa will host its fourth South African Investment Conference on Thursday, 24th March this year at the Sandin Convention Center in Johannesburg. The conference is part of government's investment drive to attend to attract 1.2 trillion over five years, and it attracts delegates from South Africa worldwide to discuss investment opportunities. Since the first investment conference in 2018, South Africa has attracted 774 billion in commitments, in commitments across the wide range of economic sectors. Of 152 investment announcements made previously, 45 projects have already been completed. A further 57 projects are currently under construction. As of February 2022, those firms who have completed their reporting have advised that 314 billion, which is 40.6% of the committed investment pledges have been expended. This new investment will help us to grow the economy, create much needed jobs, and improve the lives of people. An update on the coronavirus. Cabinet acknowledged the country's efforts towards the fight against COVID-19, but cautioned that battle is not yet over and urged all people in South Africa to remain vigilant and continue protecting themselves to stop the spread of the deadly virus. Cabinet is also pleased that almost 32 million COVID-19 vaccines doses have been administered and that over 42% of our adult population is fully vaccinated. However, unvaccinated people still remain unprotected against COVID-19 and pose a health risk to themselves and those around them. Vaccination remains the best way to fight COVID-19 and cabinet calls on everyone age 12 and above to vaccinate without further delay. Booster shots are now freely available for most people and cabinet calls on those who are eligible to get boosted, boosted as soon as possible. We must also continue to wear masks that cover both the mouth and the nose, wash or sanitize our hands, frequently keep safe social distance and ensure adequate ventilation by opening windows. On the Africa Energy in Daba, Cabinet welcomed the successful conclusion of the hybrid Africa Energy in Daba held in Cape Town from the 1st to the 3rd of March and under the theme open quote, the business meeting of the business meeting of choice for Africa energy sector, close quote. The gathering brought together influential global and local players from the energy sector to deliberate on how the African continent can use energy as a catalyst to grow the economy and improve the lives of people. South Africa remains committed to achieving an energy mix that is consistent with its development goals and its climate change goals whilst ensuring security supply, security of supply. Security cluster appointments. Cabinet welcomed the recent high level appointment in the National Prosecution Authority and the state security. President, President Ramaphosa appointed advocate Andrea Johnson to head the NPA's investigation directorate and Ambassador Tembisile Majola as the new Director General of SSA. 
The president also appointed advocate Navila Sumaru as director of public prosecution in the Free State, advocate Matozi Rachel Makari Sakalelo as TPP in Northwest, and advocate Nicolette Bell as TPP in the Western Cape. These appointments will strengthen our capacity to investigate and prosecute all acts of crime and corruption. Service delivery oversight visit. Cabinet welcomed the successful oversight visit by the Minister of Public Works and Infrastructure, Ms. Patricia Tilil, and the Minister in the Presidency, Minister Monte Kungubele, to the N2 nodal project in the Nelson Mandela Bay Municipality in the Eastern Cape, on Tuesday, 8 March 2022. The visit forms part of government's initiative towards a more regular direct assessment of progress made on the implementation of infra infrastructure investment plan to reignite the economy and create jobs. This specific project comprises 12,100 new housing opportunities with over 500,000 meter square retail commercial office and industrial facilities as well as the full spectrum of community and social facilities on the international women's day south africa joined the international community in commemorating international women's day on tuesday 8 march this day is an opportunity to reflect on how far we have come in advocating in advancing gender equality and what needs to be done to become a more gender equal nation Cabinet is impressed by the many successes worth celebrating since the dawn of democracy. South Africa has made progress in promoting equality for women in areas like government, civil society, the administration of justice, sport and culture. However, Cabinet reiterates that more still needs to be done to ensure full and equal participation of women in South Africa. Cabinet also welcomed the appointment of South Africa to the chairpersonship of the 66th session of the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women to be held from Monday, 14th March to Friday, 25th March. On the state security, Cabinet noted the United States Treasury arrest of individuals allegedly involved in money laundering. We continue to work with our international partners to stem the flow of illicit funds. Our security forces remain on high alert and are in constant liaison with foreign intelligence services, both within South Africa and abroad. Their work includes information exchange on threats presented by violent extremism and terrorism. On the public violence, Cabinet condemned the recent incidents of violence and public clashes in Alexander near Santé. No amount of discontent can justify the violation of people's rights in, in this country. Cabinet welcomed the speedy intervention by law enforcement agencies, which resulted in calm being restored in the area and the arrest of several alleged perpetrators of public violence. Communities are urged to use peaceful means to resolve disputes and to report all illegal activities to law enforcement agents. On the economy, Cabinet has noted the gross, domestic, the, the gross domestic product figures released by Statistics South Africa recently, and which show that South Africa's GDP grew by 1,2% in the fourth quarter of 2021 after shrinking by 1,7% in the third quarter of 2021. This brings South Africa's annual growth rate for 2021 to 4,9%. The main contributors to this growth were recorded in agriculture, manufacturing, services, and transport. Cabinet remains resolute to continue working with its social partners towards our inclusive economic growth and create an environment where we will be able to address the challenges of unemployment, poverty, and inequalities. Auction of the high demand radio frequency spectrum Cabinet congratulated the Independent Communications Authority of South Africa for the commencement of the auction of the high-demand radio frequency spectrum, despite the ongoing litigations. It also congratulated the bidders who participated in the auction 
on Tuesday 8 and Thursday 10 March 22, which shows the intent by the telecommunications industry to continue investing in the digital infrastructure in South Africa. Government remains committed to creating an enabling environment for radio spectrum to be used optimally, not only by the telecommunication industries, but also to the benefit to benefit the economy and society. The licensing of high demand radio spectrum will improve the ability of mobile telecommunication operators to build robust telecommunications with greater penetration and reach. Great benefits of this long awaited process include the reduction of the cost of data and voice communication. The spectrum is also expected to contribute to economic transformation in the various sectors and the proceeds of the auctions will inject over 8 billion into the national fiscus. On the national lotteries, cabinet noted the remarkable progress achieved by the special investigation unit investing, investigating in their intensive investigation of maladministration and corruption within the NLC and urged the law enforcement agents dealing with this matter to complete their work as soon as possible. This will ensure that the necessary steps can be taken to hold accountable persons or organizations implicate, implicated in the unlawful misappropriation of funds earmarked to benefit the poor. On the cabinet decisions, with regard to the National Infrastructure Plan, cabinet approved the National Infrastructure Plan 2050 for implementation. The NIP provides catalytic pro project and are meant to contribute towards the country's long-term economic and social developmental goals. The plan received a number of written comments after it was published for public comments in 2021. Inputs were also received from the public consultation with various stakeholders in the infrastructure sector. The consultation also included regional and continental bodies such as Southern Development Community, and African Union Commission for Infrastructure. The NIP provides for the development of the country's infrastructure networks that are aligned to national spatial development framework and the district development model. It also focuses the construction of infrastructure towards socio-economic development and also to generate employment and broad-based black economic empowerment opportunities. Again, this is affirmation that the president is leading an infrastructure-led economic recovery. On the, on the liquefied petroleum gas rollout strategy 2022, the cabinet approved the publications of the LPG rollout strategy of 2022 in the government gazette for public comment. The strategy seeks to contribute towards addressing countries' energy supply challenges. The strategy deals with, with amongst others, the, the structural features of the current LPG market, existing infrastructure, the pricing structure, and the current local manufacturing capacity of the LPG cylinders. The strategy also deals with the safety and awareness campaign to raise the profile of domestic gas as an environmentally friendly, friendly fuel. On the exploration strategy for the mining industry of South Africa, Cabinet approved the exploration strategy for the mining industry of South Africa. The strategy will, amongst others, provide immediate intervention in its implementation plan to undertake a comprehensive geoscience mapping to improve the country's geoscience data. The strategy also proposes a collaboration between the Department of Mineral Resources and energy with industrial development cooperation to ensure that ex exploration provides for the inclusion of the emerging exploration companies. It also reinforces the research role to be played by research institutions such as MINTEC and the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research and the Skills Development Program. The strategy is the product of a broader consultation between government, industry and other social partners. The mining industry remains the vital livelihood of the country's economic ecosystem. In operationalizing of the Batupili revitalization strategy, cabinet approved the operationalization, I beg your pardon, cabinet approved the operationalization of the Batupili 
revitalization strategy. The strategy is an outcome of a number of researches conducted by both government and non-governmental institutions on the effectiveness of 1997 Batupili policy. The strategy provides the five pillars which will guide the minimum standards to be adhered to by all departments. The proposed cabinet approved the extension of the cutoff date for the application for the COVID-19 TRF from 31st March to 31st March 2023. The tariff with a budget amount of 1,135 billion was allocated as once of payment to mitigate the negative financial impact of COVID-19 on the taxi industry. The National Empowerment Fund is responsible for the disbursement of the compensation to all legal taxi operators with, the, with valid operation, operating license, including minibus taxis, metered taxis, and e-hailing partners. On the bills, South African Post Office Amendment Bill of 2021, Cabinet approved the publications of the SAPO Amendment Bill for public comment. The bill seeks to amend the SAPO Act 2011, Act 22 of 2011. The proposed amendments seek to enable SAPO to take advantage of the te technological developments in its environment. It will be able to revise its duties and expand its mandate. It will be a service provider of universal postal and courier and integrated logistic e-commerce and will be a digital hub for business and communities. The proposed amendments, which are aligned to the National Integrated ICT Policy White Paper of 2016, also make improvements to governance provisions of SAPO. On the South African Post Bank Amendment Bill of 2021, Cabinet approved the submission of the South African Post Bank Amendment Bill of 2021 to Parliament. The bill amends the Post Bank Act 2010 to align it with Banks Act 1990, it provides for the establishment of South African Post Bank holding company in terms of the Bank Act of 1990. The bill has gone through public consultation to strengthen it. Once adopted in law, the Post Bank will be able to operate as a separate entity with its regulatory framework outside SAPO. On the Radioactive Waste Management Fund Bill, Cabinet approved the publication of the Radioactive Waste Management Fund Bill for public comment. The bill provides for the creation of the fund as directed by the Radioactive Waste Management Policy. The funds will be collected to be used towards the management of radioactive waste. It will enable the setting up of the infrastructure to handle, provide storage, and oversee the permanent disposal of the radioactive waste. The fund will be managed through the National Radioactive Disposal Institute. South Africa benefits on clean energy generated through the Quebec nuclear power station. Also, South Africa remains one of the biggest producers of the radio pharmaceutical products that diagnose and treat cancer in the world. On the upcoming events, official visit by the President of Mozambique, President Cyril Ramaphosa will be hosting his Mozambican counterpart, His Excellency President Philip Nyusi, on Friday, 11 March 2022. The visit will further strengthen mutual, regional, and continental cooperation between the two nations. It also reinforces bilateral relations and cooperation between South Africa and Mozambique, both politically and economically. The presidential ambassador in the Northwest. On Saturday, 12 March, President Ramaphosa will lead a delegation to Northwest to conduct a presidential embezzle. During this event, the president and leaders from all three spheres of government will interact with communities in the Northwest. The inaugural presidential embezzle of 2022 provides a platform for the president to engage with communities on their experience of daily, of daily life and service delivery by government. Citizens who also engage directly on their proposal on how we can grow South Africa together without leaving anyone behind, as it was stated in the President's SONA address. Building on the TDM, which calls for greater cooperation between citizens and public representatives 
cabinet urges community in the Northwest to use this opportunity to engage directly with the president and to make their concerns or proposal heard. On the Human Rights Day, cabinet welcomed the series of dialogue and events under the theme, open quote, the year of unity and renewal, protecting and preserving our human rights gains, close quote, being conducted as part of commemorating this year's human rights on Monday, 21st March 22. This also contributes to assessing the progress of the nation's constitutional democratic project. Cabinet calls on all South Africans to use Human Rights Month to foster greater social cohesion, nation building, and a shared national identity. It is our duty as nation to strive for inclusive social economic development while ensuring that we combat racism, racial discrimination, and all related intolerances. On the National Water Week, the National Water Week campaign takes place from Sunday, 20 to Saturday, 26 March, 2022. It focuses on the need to protect and conserve our water resources. Despite much heavier than normal rainfall in many parts of the country over the past few months, South Africa remains a water scarce country. It is one of the 30 driest countries in the world, and most of its water comes from rainfall. Cabinet reassures citizens that our tap water is safe for human consumption, as confirmed by the National Institutes for Communicable Disease, and reports about drinking water linked, and reports about unsafe drinking water linked to typhoid fever are, are also false. Government is prioritizing water reticulation in communities. On special messages, we express congratulation uh, on the uh, cabinet extended its congratulation and well wishes to the following. South African women's cricket team who are flying the national flag high at the ICC Women's Cricket World Cup in New Zealand. Athlete Stevens Mukoka, who has broken the men's 50 kilometer world record in a time of two hours, 40 minutes, and 13 seconds in the net bank, runified breaking barriers race in Kabeha, Eastern Cape, on Sunday, 6 March 2022. Condolences, Cabinet expressed condolences to the family and friends of. Mr. Mandla Gamabuza, 47, an artist orator and the former president of the South African Students Congress. He was the former public servant in the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. On appointments, all appointments are subject to the verification of qualifications and relevant clearance. Mr. Zane. Udin Dango as DG at the Department of International Relations and Cooperation. Ms. Pindile Patronella Mkwanazi as Deputy DG, Learning and Professional Development at National School of Government. Mr. David Mapita as Chief Executive Officer of Mine Health and Safety Council. Persons to serve in the International Air Service Council. Ms. Nomveli Sontanjana, Chairperson, Ms. Nare Tupana, Vice Chair, Ms. Grant Riogon, Son, Mr. Tumelo Shifupa, and Ms. Fumelani Tokas Mbulain. Persons to serve in the Air Service Licensing Council, Mr. Leroy Musa Nsibande, Chairperson, Ms. Riasibe Sharon Kekana, Vice Chair, Mr. Ricky Roger Reni, Mr. Zonika Leander Mchali, and Mr. Ramova Emmanuel Mbue. Thank you very much. Thanks for your listening. Thank you very much, uh, DJ. Thank you very much, Minister. I will take questions. Willie, who is giving us questions? Have you where you are number one? Thank 
Can you wait to be president? <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm just a bit, you read out the statement for over 30 minutes and not once did you mention our blackout. Did Tablet not discuss anything with the crisis that we are facing? I'd expect that there'd be more frank discussions from our leaders in terms of how to get us out of this mess. We're talking about stage six load shedding. Um, really, we'd expect the president even to take a firmer responsibility on how to steer this ship. Are there any discussions of the sort in cabinet on how to get us out of this mess, or is it an admission that government has failed when it comes to these rolling blackouts? Um, and then can we also touch maybe on the state capture report, was it discussed at all at cabinet, the implication of um, the energy minister, Kweteman Dashe, on what needs to be done? Was it discussed on what needs to be done by government when it comes to the report itself? Um, you mentioned the issue around Ukraine, but I just want to maybe get your response on Russia now bombing a children's hospital. Any franca discussions around what needs to happen with this, given that now, of course, it's involving even the bombing of children's hospitals. And on the public violence, while you might have condemned it, you're not re really giving us direction on what needs to happen, because there are, of course, underlying issues, whether they be xenophobic or whether they be genuine, when it comes to issues of um, unemployment and South Africans being overlooked. What is government's stance on what realistically needs to happen? Because um, these public spaces of violence that we're seeing around Alexandra don't seem like they'll dim down anytime soon. Thank you. And, uh, if you want to give a thumbs up, of students in the Ukraine. Is the government partnering with any other private companies to assist with the evacuation? Um, Tom was also asking, has government discussed the possible extension of the national state of disaster beyond the 15th of March? When can the country expect alternative legislation to manage COVID-19 to be finalized? Um, Kulegani Makubani from Fin24 is asking, um, what was said at the cabinet meeting, if anything, about National Treasury circular on the abeyance of tenders from mid-February, and can the minister confirm if there are going to be any new draft preferential procurement guidelines released soon? Um, Vince Telele Rutla from Business Report is asking, will President Ramaphosa be addressing the nation anytime, anytime in the next five days, seeing that the current uh, national state of disaster expires on Tuesday? <coughs> um, Telele is also asking, when is Cabinet expecting the Minister of Mineral Resources and Energy to table a review methodology for the petrol price? I have more questions, did you share to me? Minister, do you want to take that, this batch? Or is it, yeah. Let's take this batch and then the Minister will come back again. You want to? Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, to our viewer on the blackout, nothing mentioned. I think on an ongoing basis, this is the matter that we are seized with. Sometimes it will find a way in our statement, not because it's not being dealt with on an ongoing basis, not because the relevant departments are not doing something about it. I think to show the seriousness of government, you read the statement of the president in this one on the series of interventions. 
and uh, the, <coughs> and the response by the Minister of Energy saying that by the end of this coming financial year about 7,000 megawatts would have been put in the system. The, the point I want to make of you is that the fact that the infrastructure now is in trouble and that always have symptoms, it's not going to change until all these interventions serve the purpose for which they are being brought in. In other words, the patient is sick, sometimes the patient walks fully, sometimes there's difficulty in breathing, until there's a cure, those hiccups are going to take place. But we'll always communicate like ESCOM has been doing. I've been following them, doing their communication. In other words, there are various ways in which we communicate this. Not everything in every statement that we have comes in our, but it's got nothing to do with whether we care or not. Our interventions, the sonar address, and also the budget speech will indicate the interventions, including the minister's response in this matter. All I'm trying to say, we have demonstrated our worry about this, more now by committing to execute particular tasks, rather than saying every day we know there's trouble, because we've said that several times. So I think I'm, I'm trying to send a message that the fact that that statement is not here cannot be an indication that we don't care. We are troubled by this. Let me just repeat this, uh, Aviwa. The minister would have told you in the budget speech that uh, our growth prospect had been revised down from 5.1. And he would have said in that speech, the challenges are both domestic and international. And internationally, he explains, but internally, the riots and other things, he included energy there as one of the reasons. The unreliable availability. In other words, this thing is on our radar screen on a daily basis. Uh, you are saying state capture. Uh, state capture, you, you remember, one of the major things I, I keep on saying about this uh, is that the president did uh, what he does on these uh, commission of inquiry reports. It's almost unprecedented, by the way. The state capture one, you know, of uh, is in your website, commas and full stop, nothing that has been edited. And there's clear commitment that we are analyzing that. Once we complete analyzing a report by the president on how to implement it is anticipated to be by end of June, but one is no longer sure now that there's been extension uh, to, to what to call that we're working on that. But in other words, the report, as you know it in its entirety, the president will present an implementation plan so that if there are any gaps in the implementation plan, the, the, the public is there to commit. Uh, when it comes, I always said, uh, when it comes to my colleagues, I always leave that uh, in the office of the president. Uh, but having said that, I'm sure you will remember that the minister did say he would actually take this matter on review, but the, the final say on that is actually, I, I always prefer to leave that with the president, uh, because I cannot claim to know what the president is thinking about it, but all I know, the president and this government is committed to implement the recon recommendations of the state capture without with leaving no stone unturned. I once said in one of the interviews, probably even the stone in your sitting room. Uh, now, on the Ukraine, I think you must have read that from the president desk on Monday on this matter, and the consistent stance of South Africa, that we always are against conflicts that lead to loss of life. Even more disturbing when it costs the life of children. But the question that must always be, the question that is always asked, what do we do? The, 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 this government led by this president, whenever you enter a complex, a conflict of this complexity, you always have to ask a question, how will our participation in South Africa improve the situation? Because here is a very complex, uh, it, it, it's, it's a conflict underlined by complex factors. Russia would have had their reasons, West they have their views, 
But at the end of the day, it actually re results in people fighting and people dying. How you enter that, you must answer the question, how am I improving the situation? That's why South Africa avoids taking any side on this matter, because the best intervention you can make is the best possible solution that South Africa can provide. So that's why we say we call for peace. We are against the killing of people for, or for whatever reasons. We always believe in negotiated uh, peaceful resolutions. Uh, so we cannot be comfortable about the bombing of children, having said that. Uh, on the Alex violence, underlying, factory, and, uh, underlying factors, I'm sure, uh, our viewer, you must have followed the Minister of Labor <coughs> tabling a policy to deal with this matter. We know the underlying, what some of the underlying factors, <coughs> so can I get water? Some of the underlying factors in this matter is, a, is economic insecurity by South Africans and, uh, and, and the failure of South African business to actually abide with the established what we call targets. Because all over Africa now, I'm sure you must have heard a lot of pronouncements how various countries are trying to protect job for their citizens. But South Africa's approach is of such a nature that, that we acknowledge that you can't cut South Africa out of the continent, but there are, there are certain set of jobs which we think should be protected for South Africans. But at the end of the day, the basic issue here is to make sure that as we move even to that Africa which is seamless, one, we, do, we walk that path with legality because we, we usually argue sometimes that if you allow illegality because you want to resolve our problem, the outcomes of that can actually be dire. You cannot say because you've got a noble atten intention, therefore you must be illegal in pursuit of that, because the worst can come out of that. Therefore, that's why you are saying no form of disorder, of smashing infrastructure, of beating people who happen not to belong to your country will resolve this matter. It can only be resolved within the laws of the country. So we, we know the underlying issues. We might not have shouted them enough, but we have said them a number of times to prove that we are intervening in terms of policy and that policy is being consulted. Uh, on the Aspen, uh, ev uh, committing to evacuate, we are, we are working with all those who, in, who are intervening. We are working with all those who are intervening in assisting us to evacuate South Africans, even even other Africans in that matter who happen to find themselves in this conflict. And then a possible extension of... On the COVID-19, we have said that uh, we have made our clear intentions to do away with the Disaster Act. But we have said that we don't want to leave a vacuum. Because the biggest challenge here, this thing is so unpredictable. You must have means in case it comes at an unexpected time. You must have means to be able to take care of that situation. So you need to, to leave measures in as far as that is concerned. I have no doubt very soon there will be other announcements in as far as that is concerned. On the National Treasury, I'm sure you, I hope they are speaking about the court order. Our understanding is that that matter is being discussed to make sure that the work of government is protected because if not properly handled, it can have a huge impact with regard to the delivery program of the country, uh, be it transformative, be it turning the economy around. A lot of work is being done about that. One of the things that are being contemplated, if, if I remember very well, is that uh, the court suspended the invalidity of what it said is wrong until certain regulations are put in place. And then we, there's, a, there's an attempt to seek clarity around that. So where we are, there's work that is being done with regard to that. And uh, I remember even the Treasury issued some orders on how departments must conduct themselves in the interim. Uh, what was the other question? You, petrol. Hmm? 
I'm not sure if I, if I heard the question. Can it be repeated? Yes. yes. Uh, I cannot exactly give the specific date on that. All I know, even if you listen to the Minister of Finance on the budget, that there's work being done to, to minimize the strain that derives from the direction of that expense. But I cannot give you the exact date, exactly when is that going to happen, but work is being done in as far as that is concerned. I think we'll take the last round. Avi still wants to come back. Okay. Proceed. Minister, um, you mentioned that cabinet is troubled by the continued blackouts. Millions of South Africans are also troubled by those very blackouts, hence I need to come back to that question. You did not give direction, Minister, as to what cabinet says needs to be done to get us out of this mess. You mentioned a patient that, that limps sometimes and sometimes um, is able to walk. According to ESCOM itself, we are headed for stage six. That means this patient is literally dying. You're not giving us directions from the cabinet meeting as to what the leaders are saying needs to happen. To me, this is an admission of government saying that we're failing to resolve this ESCOM issue. What, what was the clear, decisive measures, um, Minister, that were taken from that cabinet meeting on what needs to happen, but more importantly, when this ESCOM crisis will be remedied. And the other question is around um, maybe cabinet discussions on the opening of stadiums to more than 2,000 spectators. Were there any indications on that behalf? Okay, Nangaba, let's take yours. All right. Um, the next one is from Paul, the um, captain from Bloomberg. He's asking a Deputy Minister of Finance um, inform Cabinet about the $16 billion investment by Ford in Twane um, was at risk because the municipality had not secured electricity supply for the project. If he did, what is Cabinet's plan to reduce this risk? Um, and then we have a question. Um, from what, um, uh, what is Cabinet's view on the announcement by the Western Cape Premier, Ellen Wendy, that the provincial government of the Western Cape will not attend any events or meetings organized by the Rus Russian Federation or any of its consulates and a Russian uh, Federation's embassy and consulates officials are no longer welcome at the, at the events of the province of the Western Cape. And then my last question is, um, what the person doesn't state where they are from, uh, but the question is, um, I would like to know when the President of the Republic of South Africa is going to appoint the Chief Justice of South Africa. That's it. Can, 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 can you repeat the last question? When the president will appoint the chief justice. Chief justice. Okay. I think it's usually the last round, but we'll see whether there's somebody. <laughs> Benny. I don't know what to say, a viewer, to you on this. All I'm saying is that the government is in dealing with ESCOM challenge. On an ongoing basis, communication is going to come out. I'm very careful now to give you the details of exactly what is happening in that institution. I would prefer to actually 
visit that once I speak with the minister concerned. But I've no doubt work is being done. I, 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 I think we must accept that ESCOM has gone. There are moments where ESCOM would have gone in the worst situation, but we've been able to, to rise as we are trying to actually uh, ensure that there's energy availability. I, I prefer not to deal with some of the details, but all I want to say to you, uh, there isn't much new that is happening now, which has not been a pain before. It is informed by the state of the damage of the machinery that is actually pertaining at the moment. We can look at it whatever way we are looking at it. The ultimate solution is ensuring that we improve the, uh, the energy availability factor of ESCOM. Do, do South Africa needs to be briefed better? I agree with you. It's something that I think we'll actually attend to and even improve. Uh, with regard to what you might think we have not told you today. It was not an item. Yeah, it was not an item. It, it had nothing to do with, un, with, with its unimportance because as a minister who deals with it on a daily basis. You only, you only discuss these matters of you if there's something new that needs a cabinet's response. But if it's, it's a problem that have been on average ongoing that is within the technical capability and the minister deployed in that area. But if there's something that requires cabinet to take a decision, is at this point in time that would have been tabled before the cabinet. Whatever problems now that are pertaining are the problems that they've been confronted with over time. So there, there's nothing as far as I'm concerned that required cabinet decision. I repeat, do we need more information to communicate to South Africans, will always not, uh, th there's no way we'll say we're perfect in communicating that. We'll always try to improve in dealing with the anxieties of South Africans. I agree. We can, we can deal with that. Right? Uh, what is the other issue? Uh, again, the issue of stage, yeah? We are awaiting the we are, remember the first figure that was proposed, uh, the sporting community felt it was not cost effective. So we're looking towards a situation where when the state of disaster goes off, bigger numbers which will be cost effective. For at this point in time, I don't think it is wise to comment on, on the numbers of what we call of sport. What else did come out? Okay. No, we've got to follow that one up. It's not a matter that does. The 16 billion in Swane. Uh, did, you, did they say it's lacking electricity? Yes. Yes, no, I think we've got to follow up at the risk of giving false information. Statement of Alan, Alan Winder. Okay. Uh, when we come to the Western Cape, we we have expressed the state of the position of South Africa as far as Ukraine is concerned that we are, we are not intending to take sides in this. But uh, I don't think we've got power to prevail over who DA wants to meet and who they don't want to meet. That is beyond our control. But as a country, we have articulated the position of the country and we are comfortable with that. We've answered that question a number of times. That that is in the purview of the president. But we know it will happen soon, and uh, we know that it's the president's concern that it might happen soon. You must understand there's a lot of considerations before you take these decisions, but again, that is in the president's purview. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we have come to the end of this post-cabinet briefing. And thank you very much, and thanks for coming.